State Representative John Frullo, who's in studio with us, and State Representative Frullo will be on for the rest of the show. And uh, just right quick, State Representative, I'd like to thank you for your participation in our debate watch party coming up next Wednesday night, uh, September 16th at Premier Cinemas. Oh, you bet. That, that was fun, though, when uh, we came up with the idea of uh, uh, giving out the popcorn to the first 100 people. Everybody's going, yeah, that's right. This is a show. This will be a fun time, uh, you know, especially with uh, uh, Donald Trump in there and uh, the theatrics that he'll throw in. Uh, it'll be just <laughs> like uh, maybe watching a movie, huh? That's right. <laughs> So, again, the, the debate watch party is free to attend. It's at Premier Cinemas next Wednesday, September 16th. The doors for our specific <laughs> theater opening at 7. Sorry. We, Speaking we, of popcorn, I was like, can we throw it at the at the screen? Is that allowed? They, they may not approve of that one, Laura. <laughs> I, I do not condone that activity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no matter it, what Trump says. Huh? And as uh, State Representative <laughs> Frullo said, uh, the first 100 people in attendance, he will pay for your small popcorn for that event. So again, mm -hmm. that's uh, next Wednesday night, September 16th. On a more serious note, uh, there's been some news out of Austin uh, recently with uh, Texas Mutual Insurance Company, which is uh, a part of the state through how it was formed and everything else. And I, and I guess the first thing is why, uh, I guess, why is Texas Mutual Insurance Company important in, in what's been going on in, in the news with them? Well, first off, uh, you know, Texas Mutual is important just due to its size, the way it operates. It uh, was started as a fund back in the late 80s and, uh, you know, around the turn of the century ended up becoming a mutual fund, which means it's uh, owned by the participants or the members of the insurance company. But if you go back into the 80s, uh, late 80s, a lot of the employers will remember how hard it was to get workers' compensation insurance, which meant if, if you're a company that needs that and can't get it, you may not be able to bid on jobs. You may not be able to get work. Employers were leaving the state. Employers were not coming to the state. And uh, it was just killing business. And also the uh, employees were going uninsured. There were other problems there. They couldn't afford the insurance if they could get it. And so it came into place. Fast forward that to Today, Texas Mutual is a over $6 billion company. It writes over $1.1 billion of workers' comp insurance premiums and is about 40% of the market. So it's roughly 40%. The next largest one is around 6 or 7%. So it is very important to, you know, four out of every 10 employees are basically insured by Texas Mutual. So that's very important. It's a very, you know, it's kind of the backbone of the workers' comp insurance industry in Texas. Right. With, uh, with that level of importance and everything, I, I assume that it ends up being a pretty large line item in the budget each year for the legislature and everything else and helping helping it stay alive, I guess. Well, not really. It's not part of the state budget at all. It operates oh, really? on its own. It uh, the, It's ties to the state, and they've been decreased over the last uh, number of years. It Its ties go back to governor appointments. The board is comprised of nine members. Four of those are elected from the, the members, uh, the mutual members, the people that actually buy the insurance. Five of them are appointed by the governor, including the, the chairman of the board. And so that's the tie there. Still, there are still some ties to the state. Okay. So, so with that, um, I guess from what I was told, and I, and I don't know this fully, but there's, there's a relationship between Texas Mutual and the Travis County district attorney's office is, is that correct right and and I, that came to my attention uh this summer of course uh, being chairman of uh, the insurance the house insurance committee uh we work on things like this and that was one of the things that popped up is the texas tribune and jay root went through and started looking at it and they found out that uh texas mutual is reimbursing the travis county da's office for expenses when they go out and prosecute fraud workers comp fraud cases which I think we all agree that we don't want fraud in our insurance system you know it, it costs more for the employers it uh, you know it's just nothing we, we don't want fraud anywhere but especially in insurance and so they have a unique relationship where money is being spent from Texas Mutual again not from the state of Texas but from the operations of Texas Mutual uh, to the Travis County DA for reimbursement for prosecuting these insurance uh, fraud cases or purported 
reported, and what started the whole case was a, a gentleman out of uh, Midland, Odessa area, Mr. Keys, who uh, felt in, uh, that he was improperly prosecuted and went through, fought it, and ended up winning a judgment against Texas Mutual in that case. It, um, so, and that's what started the whole story, and people are looking at that. And one of the things that we'll look at in the, uh, what I hope to look at during the interim, where we study things like this, is what is that relationship? Who else can participate right now? It looks like that uh, Texas Mutual is the only one that does participate in that. And, and so, what, what can we do? What do other states do? Uh, Texas is unique from the, the standpoint of workers' comp, where we, uh, as employers, do not have to provide workers' comp. You can, you know, in essence, self-insure or what, you know, people call sometimes go naked where you don't have it, your employees don't have it. So if something happens to an employee, depending on what the company is, you could have a problem. Now, there are some companies that do not participate that have great plans. They have really good plans. They're, they're self-insured and they take care of the employees, but there's other people who choose not to. But what we want to do is make sure that that's available and we have a great marketplace, a great forum for being a, for employers being able to buy that insurance. And, and we do have that. Texas has a great market. And we want to make sure that stays in place. If an employer decides not to provide worker comp, do they need to let the workers know that in writing, that that is not you know, I'm not exactly sure how that is. I think, you know, if I was an employee, I'd want to know. Now, there are postings that an employer has to do if they do have it, so you could look at those uh, postings. So, you know, I guess the lack of a posting would be that they don't have that. Mm -hmm. So it would be incumbent on the employee to go and ask where are those postings, and it lists who the insurance company is and the, the, the time of the policy and information like that. So they, you know, list the uh, insurance uh, workers' comp uh, numbers from the state, and different places like that. So you can find out that you are covered. Mm -hmm. And continuing our discussion with State Representative John Frullo about Texas Mutual Insurance, we've got about three to four minutes left. And uh, one item uh, with Texas Mutual that was brought up from this Texas Tribune article, State Representative, was the fact that uh, Texas Mutual using uh, the Travis County DA's office to prosecute against alleged uh, fraud against the company. Do other... Workman's comp companies in Texas have the same ability to use Travis County DA? My understanding is that they don't, and that's one of the things that we want to look into is what is happening there, what remedies are available, because still there's another 60% of the market uh, that if they can't, you know, should have that available to them, and we want to make sure that, that that does happen and, you know, again, that we're keeping fraud out of the system. The Travis County DA's office is being used for a lot of special projects in the state uh, with, like, special prosecutor and other things like that. Do you think that the legislature needs to move some of those duties out to a separate office well, we, or we, division to the attorney general's office? It, no, it, that's a great point, and that's exactly what we did last session is we moved a lot of that stuff. We uh, took funding away from the public integrity unit and said, you know, let's move that back out to the, the different areas of the state. And, and so, you know, I think that's important that, uh, that we do that, and we did do it um, you know, we'll, we'll see how that works, but I, I supported that. I think that uh, we came up with some great solutions, and uh, that was one of, uh, of course, uh, you can prosecute anywhere in the state from anywhere, you know, and so that's what was happening is that, uh, at least in this case, that Texas Mutual, of course, is headquartered in Austin, which is in the People's Republic of Travis County, and uh, so from there they were, the, the long arm of the law went out to the Midland Odessa area to get Mr. Keys. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you had mentioned during the break that, uh, Texas Mutual is the insurer of last resort. Explain that for the audience. Okay, right what, the, what the insurer of last resort means that if, if you are a company and you are looking for workers' comp insurance and you can't get it, usually due uh, to the type of activity you're involved in, that they are what they call the insurer of last resort. Some people refer to that as a POLAR, provider of last resort. And what that means is they will provide insurance for you. You know, they'll come up with a plan. And there's roughly in uh, one of the tiers that they talk about or that bottom tier, 120, I believe, companies that fit into that, uh, most likely just due to the nature of what they do. It's a very dangerous type uh, item. There, there's not a, you know, the idea with insurance is you spread a risk over a large group and then you let the whole group cover when something bad happens or, you know, when an event happens. 
Right. State Representative John Frillo, thank you for joining us this morning on the show. And we will see you Wednesday night, September 16th. Well, actually, I'll be at the Republican Caucus. Uh, oh, that's right. I, that's I, why I, I, but, uh, for, you, forgot I'll about be that. there in spirit. Right. You'll be there in spirit at our debate watch And party. buying popcorn. That's right. Wednesday, <laughs> September 16th. Laura, you're welcome Anderson's. to be there. Well, thanks. i got to throw popcorn at Trump. So, yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs>